Good evening. We'd like to welcome everyone to St. Maurice Church as we celebrate the 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The sanctuary light burns this week for Alfred and Rita Young. The mass intention for Saturday's mass is for Catherine Prechette, and Sunday's mass intention is for Jean Simon. The mass intention for Tuesday, June 18th, is for Mary Gillen. Please rise as we sing our opening hymn, Let Us Go to the Altar, hymn 320 in the songbook. Let us go to the altar of God, the God of our gladness and joy. Let us enter the courts of the house of the Lord and sing to the glory of God. Give praise with blasts of trumpets, with no Praise the Lord. Let's begin this Holy Eucharist with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ, third Sunday of June is set apart specially as Father's Day. And it is a day that we honor, appreciate, and love our fathers in a very special way for all that they have been doing for us. We have fathers, we have uh, grandfathers, stepfathers, and some of our fathers are uh, deceased no more with us. It's, we, we still love them and we pray for them. We pray those uh, with us, we pray for their good health of mind and body and for this is we pray for the eternal life and also uh, uh, we also remember our heavenly father who is who is giving all, all other blessings in our life so the father's day let us honor them and love them and appreciate them let us pause for a while and prepare ourselves for this celebration Lord Jesus, you came to call us sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Christ Jesus, you are a redeemer and savior. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by your soul and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoe, and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. give thanks to you. Lord, it is good, good to, to give, give thanks, thanks to you. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, Most High, to proclaim, to proclaim your, your kindness, kindness at dawn and, and your faithfulness, faithfulness throughout the night. The night. Just one shall flourish like the palm tree, like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow. That they are planted in the house of the Lord, shall flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. They shall bear fruit even in old age, vigorous and sturdy shall they be, declaring how just is the Lord. My rock, in whom, in whom there is no wrong. wrong. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the lord be with you you are reading from the holy gospel according to saint mark jesus said to the crowds this is how it is with the kingdom of god it is as if a man were to scatter the seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day and through it all the seed would sprout and grow he knows not how of its own accord the land yields fruit first the blade then the ear then full grain in the ear and when the grain is ripe he wheels the sickle at once for the harvest has come he said to what shall we compare the kingdom of god or what parable can be used for it it is like a mustard seed that when it is sown in the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth but once but once it is sown it springs up and becomes a large of plants and put forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade with many such parables he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it without parables he did not speak to them but to his own disciple he explained everything in private the gospel of the lord Ian Scott Peck in one of his books speaks about a story of a wise man visiting a dying monastery with the five aging monks after the visit as he was leaving the monastery he told the monks that one among them is a saint Each one thought certainly not me I am too old too sinful and not spiritual enough But each then thought it could be each other seeing all the good traits that each monk had and remarking about what each added to their order and to their monastery overall In that way they started treating themselves and each other with a great honor respect and love there was a new spirit of love and enthusiasm in everything they did and the people who visited the monastery began to began to notice the extraordinary love and joy among the monks which paved the way for many young men joining the community thus the dying monastery shot up to be a thriving one yes akel and the gospel both talk about the beginnings beginnings from little things yes akel is talking to the exiles in babylon and he is assuring them that they would be freed Ezekiel prophesies the better days are coming for the chosen people when Yahweh will take back his people and dwell in their midst forever so the prophets talk about a remnant a faithful remnant a small group of people that would be led home in God's good time and from and from that faithful remnant from the small beginning would grow again the great city of their ancestors the gospel provides simple yet profound and deep insights into how god's kingdom grows and flourishes often in ways that surpass human understanding 
Jesus says, the kingdom of God is like seed that grows mysteriously while the farmer sleeps or engaged in other household activities. He knows not how. And at harvest time, there is an abundance of food. And it, it all began with a tiny seed. Then he uses still another parable about the seed, the mustard seed, which he says is the tiniest of all the seeds that grows into a large bush that can shelter all kinds of birds in its shade. Both parables tell us something about how Jesus goes about establishing God's kingdom in our midst. He does not try for big and spectacular events. He simply forgives people for their sins. He touches sick people and makes them well. He gives bread to the hungry people. He shows compassion. He shows love. He weeps with those who weep. And that is what attracts people to him. How was the formation of the early Christian community? What was it that brought people together? What attracted them to this unusual group of people? What really happened was that through Jesus, the disciples and early followers had discovered the secret of community. And they adopted this simple method to spread the light of the gospel. They lived in their midst. They talked to each other, cried together, touched each other. They were concerned about their life and they prayed together. The way they interacted with each other was simple but remarkable. This simple but genuine love and concern attracted others to their community. It was as if the fragrance of love drew people like a beast to a flower. And that small group, that faithful remnant, grew to be the great church we know today. Do what you are supposed to do, and the God will do the rest. We need to be actively involved. The dying monastery was able to revive because the respect and the genuine love among them attracted young people. Gospels tells us to go back to the basic, to go, ba to go back to the roots. Our primary responsibility as people who call ourselves Christian and followers of Jesus Christ is to do just is to just to do what Jesus asked us to do and then most problems would be solved. Do what Jesus did, show compassion, be understanding of those who are different, who are different in one way or another, or with whom we do not agree. Forgive as we have been forgiven and stop judging when we don't have all the evidence. There are many times that we expect too much of ourselves and others. To make matters worse, we expect too much to happen too soon. In our spiritual lives, we are often called to practice patience. We may not see the immediate results from our efforts, but we must trust that God who is at work in ways that we cannot see. And this patience nurtures our faith and helps us remain steadfast even when the fruits of our labor are not immediately apparent. Sometimes we get thoroughly disappointed in ourselves because we are not the perfect people we imagine ourselves to be. We may be upset with our own situations, our marriages, our families, our jobs, and so on. What we have to understand is that 
none of us are self-made men or women. If you trust in God, He will give growth. We need to look at things with the, with the eyes of faith. Today in the second reading, to the letter to the Corinthians, St. Paul, urging us to walk by faith and not by sight. Pope Francis reminds us that we are all small and weak instrument which in God's hand and with his grace can accomplish great deeds. These two parables of the kingdom of God tells us that we have to trust in God to give growth to the kingdom. Furthermore, furthermore the growth he gives will be greater than we could ever imagine. We are small seeds, but God can make of us great trees. A spark grows into a forest fire. An idea can change the whole world. He sees more in us than we see in ourselves. We Christians did not rely on our own strength, but on the strength provided by Christ. God is always taking small and seemingly insignificant things and turning them into things of infinite worth. Our God is always the God of surprises. So it is an invitation to open ourselves more generously to God's plans, both on the personal level and on that of the community. Let us pray for this grace and trust. Together let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten and Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, to God from to God, begotten not made, and substantial with the Father. He all things were made for us men, for us salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified and conspired. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess in baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Merciful and loving Father, we thank you for all the blessings and graces you have showered upon us. We pray that we, like the mustard seed, grow in faith, in hope and charity, so that our lives be a rich harvest. For Holy Father Pope Francis, Archbishop Charles, and all who lead within the church, may they remain courageous and faithful instruments of salvation in the world. We pray to the Lord. We pray that this seed of faith be planted in our children and young people so that they may find Christ and develop in faith to their fullest potential. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in the world, particularly in the Holy Land and in Ukraine, that the Holy Spirit reveals to all the futility of war and creates a desire for peace in the hearts of all men. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our fathers, living and deceased, 
for grandfathers, stepfathers, godfathers, and all men who devote energy and strength toward the direction, care, and welfare of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray especially for those fathers who are in their senior years, for those that are sick, impaired, alone, or in financial difficulty, that they enjoy the love, respect, and support of their children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Catherine Pritchett, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. We bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, hear our prayers and continue to transform our hearts so that we may never stray or lo be lost to you in our daily, daily lives, but may serve you faithfully. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Our children may now bring up their offering. Our offertory song is We Walk by Faith, hymn 515 in the songbook. Blessed are you, Lord God of creation. For three openers we are received. The wine we offer you, fruit of the wine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
pray my brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the almighty father O oh God who in the offering presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature nourishing us with the food and renewing us with your sacrament grant we pray that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit through Christ our lord Amen. the lord be with you and lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the lord our god it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord for by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state and by his suffering cancelled out our sins and by his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life and by ascending, ascending to you, O Father, He has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with all the community of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without and we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord the font of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon the like the deep fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of your son our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and ended willingly in his passion he took bread and giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that hell is worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with the Francis of Pope, Charles of Bishop, 
and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Mary, and all the saints who have pleased to you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be the name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us passes, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not in temptation, but leave us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said in apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Our communion song is Seeds Scattered and Sown, hymn 345 in the songbook.
announcements for the weekend. Please return monetary and other donations for the Clarity Baby Bottle com Campaign today. And thank you for giving so generously. We are planning a surprise 80th birthday party for Sister Shirley. It's on Saturday, June 29th after the four o'clock mass. There are sign-up sheets at the entrances of the church if you're planning on joining uh, to celebrate with Sister Shirley. We hope that you can sign up there. We wish all the dads, the person that raised you, the father of your children, happy Father's Day. We celebrate all on this Father's Day. We have a special blessing for the fathers and grandfathers. So may, may I request all the fathers and grandfathers or stepfathers to stand up for the blessing. God our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers, that the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that their sons and daughters may honor them always with the spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. So once again, happy Father's Day. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, our Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Our closing hymn is Sing a New Church, hymn 427 in the songbook. Summoned by the God who made us, rich in high diversity, gathered in the name of Jesus, richer still. Yeah.